register to participate in this Eucharistic procession. We are in the middle of a three-year uh, program by the Conference of Bishops in America to study the real presence of the body, blood, and soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. And it will be culminating next May through July 17th in a national procession from the four corners of the country to Indianapolis. So if you're interested, go on the Conference of Bishops USCCB's website, and you also can go on Napa Institute's website to learn more. Each of you have been sent a worship aid, but if you haven't downloaded it, in your pews is a QR code. You can put it on your phone, and it'll have all of the mass today and the, um, all the music that will be sung by our beautiful sisters and each of you during the procession. We'll process out in order, starting with the center aisle, front to back, and then the rest will follow. We're going to be going uh, west on 51st Street, and then south on Broadway, and then east on 50, 50th, excuse me, 550, back through into the cathedral, where we'll have benediction with Bishop Whelan. Our mass celebrant is uh, the most famous, Father Michael Schmitz from uh, Hollow App, which is the Bible of the day, Bible of the year, and Catechism of the year, and so he will be our celebrant and our homilist. But he is joined by 25 priests who are concelebrating uh, with him tonight. Uh, Cardinal Dolan is in Rome for the Synod. Uh, he is very disappointed he's not here this evening, but know that he's here in spirit. Uh, each of you were sent, and it's on the QR code, is a link to this procession. It'll be recorded, the mass, the procession, and all of our proceedings tomorrow. So at no cost, you can watch them later or watch it live. It'll be on that digital link, recorded as well as live stream. And this is all being car uh, carried by EWTN, our Catholic television network, and the Catholic television network locally here. So uh, if you want to catch up on it later, you'll be able to do that at no cost. The Mass intentions tonight are for peace in Israel. So keep that in your prayers among those of your loved ones that may be ill or passed away or struggling in any way. Uh, we also give thanks to all of the sisters, especially the Sisters of Life, who have joined us every year. Uh, thank you for your, your ministry, your witness. Uh, we are going into the greatest city of the world and giving testimony that we are Christians, Catholics, and we believe in the real presence of the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. And the New York Police Department, uh, particularly through assistance with Vinnie Levin, who have shut down during rush hour all of the major avenues in Midtown. And when you walk through there, be patient with people. They are going, you're going to see sights, if you haven't been in one of these processions before, like you've never seen before. Next year, we'll be here again the day after uh, Columbus Day, October 15th. So let's make this an annual tradition. And I hope it inspires other cities, churches, schools to have a similar procession in their communities so that we can retake the culture of America. Thank you for coming tonight.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Good afternoon. <laughs> well, this is intimidating. <laughs> I, uh, honestly, uh, <laughs> we have Bishop here, a dozen, three dozen priests, you all. Um, so normally I was scheduled on a Tuesday afternoon, I'm scheduled to say Mass in our two-car garage that has been converted into a daily Mass chapel. And so it's kind of six of one, half dozen the other. <laughs> and again, to be able to be with you all, again, it's all intimidating. And this beauty, beautiful church is intimidating. But the reality, of course, is that every time we approach the altar, every time we approach the Lord, we're approaching the true and living God. We're here for one purpose, and that one purpose is to worship the true and living God, which, whether that happens in a two-car garage, whether that happens in one of the most incredible churches in the world, whether that happens with only one other person or it happens with thousands. The truth is, approaching the true and living God, that's what's intimidating. Giving God the worship he deserves, that's impossible. Having the kind of heart that can love God the way he deserves to be loved, we don't have that kind of heart. And yet he invites us to be here. He invites us to worship him this afternoon. He invites us to be with him and walk with him this afternoon. And that's impossible because we know our hearts, right? We know our hearts that they're just a mess. And that's the reality. Y'all look good. But our hearts are a mess. My heart is a mess. The last time I was in this church, I've only been in this church tw two other times. The last time I was, I was in this church, I was in a line of sinners trying to get to confession. Because my heart's just like your heart. We just have hearts that are a mess. And we need Jesus. We don't have the kind of hearts that can love him the way he deserves. We don't have the, hearts, the kind of hearts that can worship him the way he deserves. And so the very first thing we do at Mass is we just acknowledge that. We admit the fact that y'all might look good on the outside, but every, inside every one of us has a broken heart. We might be put together on the outside, but inside every one of us is a sinner and we need Jesus to rescue us to give us the kind of heart that can love him the way he deserves. And so we pray, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we hear from God's word. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Set out for the great city of Nineveh and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk, announcing, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in the ashes. Then he had this proclaimed throughout Nineveh, by decree of the king and his nobles, neither man nor beast, neither cattle nor sheep, shall taste anything. They shall not eat, nor shall they drink water. Man and beast shall be covered with sackcloth and call loudly to God. Every man shall turn from his evil way and from the violence he has in hand. Who knows? God may relent and forgive and withhold his blazing wrath so that we shall not perish. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary who sat beside the Lord at his feet, listening to him speak. Martha, burdened with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do the serving? Tell her to help me. The Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part and it will not be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. pretty sweet walk-up song. (laughs) Oh, here we go. I want to thank the Napa Institute as well as um, Bishop Whalen and Brother brother Priests, our sisters, um, all of you being here. I know that there is even a group of focus missionaries from the U.S. Coast Guard, including Tori Nygaard, one of our graduates, a UMD alum, who is now a living mission. Thank you all for being here. This is incredible. Um, what an awesome, op- awesome opportunity, not only to be here and worship the Lord, but an opportunity later on to be part of this procession. Um, today, I was so moved by the fact that the first reading is from the book of the prophet Jonah, and I just... So I'm like, I, I kind of feel like leading into this day, leading into this event today, I feel like Jonah. Here's why. So the reading today starts out by saying, it said, uh, the word of the Lord appeared to Jonah a second time, stood out for the city of Nineveh, Nineveh announced to it the message I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went. This is chapter three. We all know this, right? This is not the first time God called Jonah to go to Nineveh. Like we're just gonna, we're just gonna pretend that didn't happen apparently on this random Tuesday, we're just gonna say, yeah, you know, <laughs> there was no big fish. There was no running away from this call. Jonah is a reluctant prophet. That, that's just the fact of the matter. That Jonah doesn't want to be there, even though here it says, you know, chapter 3, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Do this thing, and he does it. But just like, I mean, he didn't really try. Right, it says it's a massive city, three days to walk through, and he says, 40 days more, and none of us shall be destroyed. He's not even trying. Like, he's not saying, like, repent. He's not offering any good news. He's not trying to convert anybody. He doesn't, 
let's just be, tr be honest here. Eight words, that's it. And in fact, it makes sense because if you know anything about the story, Nineveh is part of the kingdom of Assyria. And Assyria is the enemy of the people of Israel at this time in history. At this point in history, Israel has been subdued, they've been attacked, they've been abused, they've been destroyed. I mean, you know, it's Assyria that takes those 10 tribes in the north and disperses them to, to be gone forever. And then God says, go to them. Can you imagine that it actually took a lot for, for Jonah to think of eight words. Imagine he just wanted those last four words. Nineveh shall be destroyed. That was his whole message. He, he's there. Why? Because he has to. He, he's there for one reason. The one reason only is because God asked him to do this. And he is a reluctant prophet. He doesn't want to be there. And he doesn't want to do this. He's there because God said, go to them and take me with you. That's why he's there. He doesn't want to be there. He doesn't want to do this. But he's there because God said, go to them and take me with you. And that's why I feel like I'm a little bit like Jonah today. You know, someone, someone in the last couple of weeks, they asked me, they said, hey, how'd you come up with this idea, with this idea of doing the procession through the streets of New York? I'm like, oh, that's not my idea. <laughs> like, that's someone else's idea. They've done this a bunch of times. I've, I've not done this. They said, well, well, why do you want to do this? I'm like, I don't. <laughs> like, this is not, <laughs> you think I'm joking. <laughs> That's the funny thing. No, in fact, I had some friends who were like, you're not going to say that, are you? You can't tell them that this is not what you want to do. I'm like, I have to tell the truth. Yo, know, this is just how it goes. Why? Because on our campus, we've always have students who are like, Father, it would be the greatest idea if we had a procession of our Lord in the Eucharist around campus. I'm like, no, no, we're not going to do that. They're like, how come? It's Jesus. I'm like, I know it's Jesus and you know it's Jesus, but they out there, they don't know it's Jesus. I don't want to ambush them with the Lord, right? <laughs> I don't want to like, surprise, it's Jesus. You know, I, something about, because I mean, honestly, we'll walk out these doors in a, in a, little, a few minutes. And there, most people will not have any idea what we're doing. And the ones who do, the ones who are Catholic, they'll be like, oh, what do I do? Like, do I kneel? Do I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and so there's this, this, I'm like, I don't want to do that to people. I don't want to ambush them with the Lord. But I think it's what we need to do. What did God say to Jonah? He said, go to the people I love. I know they don't get you. I know that they actually sometimes hate you, but go to the people that I love and bring me with you. This is the command of our God. And, it, and, and it's going to be, it'll be uncomfortable. I don't know if you've ever been to Israel. Pray for Israel right now, obviously. This mass is being offered for peace in Israel. But if you've ever been to Israel, you have the opportunity to do the, a thing called the Via Dolorosa in English, that means the way of the cross, right? So to be able to do the way of the cross, it's, just, it's one of those incredible ideas that when you're doing it, you're like, this is just, again, it's just a mess. Because you have a group of people, maybe there's 30, maybe 50 people, and you're carrying a big wooden cross through the city, or the old city of Jerusalem. Well, again, which sounds amazing. You're going from, from where Jesus was tried by Pilate in the Praetorium, walking all the way through the streets of the old city. You're going to Golgotha, and just like, what a prayerful experience. But then you start doing it, and you realize that people are just doing their business. Like, people are just walking through the streets. And you're actually, I remember the first time I ever did this. We we're group, walking with this group of people, and these two men are carrying the cross. And they're carrying it like on their backs, but horizontally. As we're walking through these narrow streets, and at one point, there's this woman, and she wasn't looking, and she turns, and they clocked her right in the forehead. I'm like, oh my gosh, why would we? No wonder they don't like Christians. <laughs> we keep hitting them, hitting them in the forehead with our crosses. Like, there's a sense of, like, ah, it's just, it's not what I thought it would be like. But when you do this, you realize, oh, that's how it was with Jesus. When he walked through the streets of Jerusalem carrying his cross, this was not Jesus in his glory. This is not Jesus in power. This is not Jesus who everyone realizes, I know what's going on and I love it. This is Jesus. Who, the, the response basically to Jesus in this moment was he was either unnoticed. That's the first thing that's just so, so remarkable. That when God was in the process of saving the world, most people didn't even know what was going on. Didn't even notice it. They had to get to their thing. 
or they didn't understand what was going on. Maybe they saw it. All they saw was some criminal being condemned to death, carrying his cross. They had no idea. Can you imagine? Can you imagine all the people who saw this? In fact, I, I, would, I would dare say that not even one person who saw Jesus carrying his cross to Golgotha had any clue what was happening. Maybe Mary, maybe Mary, maybe Our Lady. But no one who saw that realized what was going on. No one who saw Jesus carrying his cross said, that is God's love for us. This is God saving our lives. Not one person. He was completely misunderstood. So he was unnoticed. He's misunderstood. And the people who did notice, many of them hated him. Many of them heckled him. Many of them spat upon him and abused him. As God was in the process of saving, our, saving the world, as God is in the process of pouring himself out in love for us, he was either unnoticed, misunderstood, or hated. Now, when I think of a Eucharistic procession, I'm like, no, I want them to know this is Jesus. I want them to understand, no, this is the love of God for you in, in the flesh. This is the love of God who loves you to the point where even if you are his enemy, he's poured out his life for you. In fact, that's what scripture says. We all know this, right? Romans chapter 5. St. Paul says, he says, yes, maybe for a good person, you might find someone who's courageous enough to die. For a good person, there might be someone who is bold enough, who is good enough to die for you if you're a good person. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were his enemies, Christ died for us. I want to be able to walk out these doors with our Lord Jesus. And when people see him, they think, oh my goodness, that is the love of God for me. I want them to understand God's love. I want them to notice him, I want them to understand him, and I want them to love him. But that's not what's going to happen. When we walk out of these doors, in this Eucharistic procession, we'll, we will notice him, we'll understand, and we're going to love him. But what God has asked us to do tonight is what he asked Jonah to do. Go out there and take me with you. Go out there to a world that doesn't notice me, that doesn't understand me, that doesn't accept me. Go out there and just take me with you. And maybe someone will look up. Maybe someone will glance over. Maybe someone will see the friends of Jesus and ask the question, who is that? They'll ask the question, what are they doing? They'll ask the question, is it true? Is it true that God loves me that much? That he doesn't stay in a church and wait for me to come to him, but he leaves the church and comes to where I am. See, this is, this is the last thing. I want Jesus to come in glory. But he keeps coming to us hidden. I want Jesus to come in power. But he keeps coming to us vulnerable. I want Jesus to come in a way that it cannot be mistaken. This is the God of the universe who has given everything because he loves you. But he's given us the chance to ignore him and to hate him. But we have to know this is true. The day is going to come. The day is going to come. I don't know when. When God will come in glory. When God will come in power. When God will come and then we will all know who we've chosen. We will all know in that moment when God comes fully revealed, fully present, everyone will notice. No one will miss him and no one will misunderstand his love and no one will misunderstand their choice. And either we will have chosen to be with him and to be associated with him. We will have either chosen to be his friends or we will have, we will have chosen to be his enemies. Today, tonight, we're not perfect, none of us. But tonight, let this be the choice. Like that, that, this, that this procession be your choice to say, God, I want, I want you to recognize me in your glory. So I'm going to cling to you when you're hidden.
God, I want to recognize you. I want you to recognize me when you're coming power, so I'm going to recognize you when you're so vulnerable. And Jesus, Lord God, I want you, when you come at the end of time, when you come and call my name and call me to you, I want to be known as your friend when you come in triumph. So let me be your friend now. Let me be your friend now when not everyone loves you. When not everyone notices you. When not everyone understands you. I think we have an incredible opportunity, an incredible invitation tonight. Tonight we get to make a choice that God willing will radiate through the rest of our lives and into eternity. We get to be Jonah. Go out there and take me with you. We get to be Simon of Cyrene and carry Jesus through the streets. We get to be his friends. His friends in his poverty, in his hiddenness, in his vulnerability, so that we can be his friends in his glory and in his power and in his victory. Today, we worship him as our, God, as our God, and we will walk with him as friends of Jesus. Oh,
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. May we praise the glory of his name, our good and of all this holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gift of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings here we present, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as a saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of, the, of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace, brother.
My brothers and sisters, we come here this afternoon united in our love for Jesus Christ, and even more powerfully united in his unstoppable love for every one of us. Unfortunately, as we know, the body of Christ is divided. Because of that, we're not able to extend the offer of communion to all those who are not Catholic or not practicing Catholic. Still, I invite everyone to come forward. If, if you're not Catholic or you know there's just some reason this afternoon you ought not to receive Holy Communion, simply cross your arms over your chest like this to receive a blessing. It's nothing weird. We do it all the time. But at the Last Supper, when Jesus gave us the Eucharist, he also begged his Father that we wouldn't be divided. When Jesus gave us this incredible gift, he begged his Father that we would be one and we're, we're not one. And for the most part, we don't care. For the most part, we're like, whatever, variety, spice of life. Until we get to this moment where it's painful, we'd experience the discomfort of division. My invitation is this, to turn that pain into prayer. And to ask God to give us the heart of his son, a heart that longs for unity in his church. So let's take a moment right now and pray for that. Let's take a moment and pray for that unity. Pray for what divides us as Christians, maybe overcome by what unites us. Let's take a moment and pray that once again, maybe in our lifetimes, all Christians may be united once again at one altar. Let's take a moment right now and pray for the unity of all disciples of Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Let us kneel. Let us kneel.
Within your will, O Lord, all things are established, and there is none that can resist your will. For you have made all things, the heaven and the earth, and all is held in the circle of heaven. You are the Lord of all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. This Mass this evening is offered for the intention of the repose of the soul of Emily Lama. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Set out for the great city of Nineveh and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walking, announcing 40 days more and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, laid aside his robe, covered himself in sackcloth, and sat in the ashes. Then he had this proclaimed throughout Nineveh. By decree of the king and his nobles, neither man nor beast, neither cattle nor sheep shall taste anything. They shall not eat, nor shall they drink water. Man and beast shall be covered with sackcloth and call loudly to God. Every man shall turn from his evil way and from the violence he has in hand. Who knows, God may relent and forgive and withhold his blazing wrath so that we shall not perish. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them he did not carry, out, carry it out. The word of the Lord. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice and supplication. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, that you may be revered. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? Let Israel wait for the Lord, for with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus entered a village 
where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary, who sat beside the Lord at his feet, listening to him speak. Martha, burdened with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not, do you not care that my sister has left my, me by myself to do the serving? Tell her to help me. The Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Several years ago, along with a number of friends, I was visiting a Benedictine monastery, and the monks invited us into their dining room. And on the dining room wall was a very, very large mural of the scene described in the Gospel tonight, Martha and Mary and Jesus. And I asked one of the monks, I said, well, so what is, what's the message for those in the monastery? Are they more on the, on the path of Martha or more on the path of Mary? And he said, oh, it's both. It's both. And isn't that true for us? We need the priority of that contemplative dimension of being with the Lord in silence, listening to his word, and at the same time, certainly there's so much that needs to be attended to, and it's an act of charity to take care of the needs of others. And so there's that constant tension, that constant push and pull. Martha and Mary, those two aspects, but we realize they're complementary, and they're both within our lives, but we give that priority, as you are tonight, to spending that time with the Lord and spending time at his feet listening to him and being with him. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, which will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual gift. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray the sacrifices instituted by your command, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we pray. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Emily, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who is united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, O Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Lord is good to those who hope in him, to the soul that seeks him. No, I'm not even close. I gotta clean up everything. Is he doing devotions? Let us pray. Grant us, almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume, through Christ our Lord. As one parish announcement, typically there are devotions uh, tonight and right after this Mass in the Lady Chapel. However, tonight the, we're not going to have devotions here. Uh, the, large Eucharistic procession which left the church is actually going to make its way back into the cathedral. That will be the uh, devotions for tonight. We might have to wait a little while. I don't know how long it's going to take them to get back, but eventually they're supposed to return. The Lord be with you. 
May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth the Mass of May.
as Father said in his sermon, like Jonah, we walk through the streets of the city, bringing and recognizing the presence of God. Did you notice the people's faces on the sidewalk? There was a mixture of wonder and worry. Some wondering how long it would take because they got to get home and feed the kids. There was a look of wonder on the faces of some who are our own and maybe have wandered. And somehow they knew they were connected because that gift of the Eucharist always renews and always restores. And there were those for whom it was all just part of the show that's New York. But they knew this was different. It wasn't the Broadway show they were lining up for and they were giving them hard times for tickets as we were going by. It wasn't just waiting to get into that starlight diner that the food really doesn't justify the wait. In the other diner we passed, they all stopped mid-soup with a spoon up <laughs> because Jesus came out to them. And just as much as we followed the example of Jonah and went through this, our Nineveh, we followed the example of Martha and Mary from the Gospel welcoming the presence of Jesus into this, our home. Like Mary, we spend time with Jesus. But like Martha, we got to make him work. We got to be able to do and bring that presence of Jesus, not just when it's easy and there's a whole load of us, and thank God we have New York's finest, the greatest police force in the world, made up of our own, Thank you. They rarely get thanked, and they deserve it. Not only did we have them guarding us as we walked, but we had one another. And it was easy, and it was good, and it was enriching. That's Mary. Now you and I are called to be Martha. Did you notice the members of our Hispanic community. Los obreros, los obreros en los negocios y todos, todos los haberes del día. Si fermen, si fermen con el señal de la cruz, participen en esta procesión. Did you see how so many of the workers came out of the restaurants, came out of the businesses, made that sign of the cross, for some of them, this may have been the first connection with that faith that's at the foundation of who they are. And then they went back to work. They're the example to you and me today who are called to be Martha. To go today, tomorrow, each day, every day, and even though we may be on our own, with no police protection, no wonder of the crowd, no singing in incense, only the rushing through daily life. To go now and welcome the presence of Jesus, as did Martha, and get to work. You may have noticed, as we came back on 50th Street, on the left side, if you didn't see it, go out afterwards and make sure you see it. Just before you get to Fifth Avenue, there on Rockefeller Center, John Rockefeller's Temple to Commerce, built purposely as a response to this cathedral, the Cathedral of the Immigrants. There on that wall is St. Francis of Assisi, just before you get to Fifth Avenue. I don't know if Rockefeller knew they put a saint on his building but it's the reminder that we are called to be saints who make the imprint, the imprint of our faith into the world in which we live. 
So, tonight when you get home, as you get home, I want you to talk to God. And I want you to talk to God about three things. First, tell God about one face you witnessed as Jesus walked the streets in New York. One face that maybe was filled with wonder, filled with hope, filled with that mysterious somehow I'm connected, filled con la fondación de la fe de la gente del país nativo. Tell God how inspiring that face is to you. Tell God how that person brought Jesus to you, even though it was us bringing Jesus to the streets. Tell Jesus that you're going to pray for that person, whose name you don't know, each and every day for the rest of this month of the Rosary. Second, prepare for this one when you go out and look across Fifth Avenue at John Rockefeller's Temple to Finance. There you've got the great Colossus. There he is, holding up the world. There is Atlas being ground down, his muscles straining to hold the weight of the world, and the world is grinding him down. Step out onto the sidewalk and take a good look at Atlas, purposely placed right at our front door. And then turn around and see the cathedral spires the cathedral spires of this cathedral of the immigrant, they lift us up. They bring us up to God. Don't grind us down. They lift us up to the God who lifts each and every one of us up each and every day, good, bad, or indifferent. And then third, thank God for the opportunity of today. Thank God for the people who made it work, made it happen, planned it, did all the background for it. Those dedicated police officers who guarded us along the way. The people who tonight have lives have been changed because for a moment, Jesus passed them on work. Thank God for this experience. I know His Eminence Cardinal Dolan is thanking God for the opportunity to welcome you here. He's, as you all know, at the Synod at Rome and wishes very much he could be with us and asked to express his gratitude to you. But tonight, let's thank God for the gift of Jesus. Because if we do, then not just on special nights like this, but on the Martha days of our lives, we'll carry Jesus into the streets and with him, the world will be changed.
have given them bread from heaven. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of the sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be Jesus, the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. May the heart of Jesus, May in the most, most blessed sacrament, sacrament, be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even unto the end of time. Amen. 